Hello again. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is we're going to migrate um, our secure services over to Spring so that we can define our services using Spring, which would just make things easier when we go to add other things like Hibernate and we need to connect to a database to get our web services to do something useful other than um, sys out print line a message. So let's take a look at where we're at here. Okay, so we have our secure services. We already did a test on those and we had them working. So now to migrate it over to Spring, we had to do a couple things. Okay, first of all, we're in NetBeans. We're, we're using JDK 6. Um, we're using Metro 2.0. Okay, so what we had to do was, of course, we added the Spring libraries that come with NetBeans. We added the 302 release of Spring. So we have all these um, jar files from the Spring um, built-in library. The other thing we had to do <coughs> is I had to go manually download these two jars here. Um, the JAX WS Spring 1.8 and XBean Spring 3.8. Um, those happen to be the latest versions of those libraries, and I'll show you why we had to do it in a minute. Um, so, well, actually, we're going to see why right now. So, in order to wire up um, Spring so that we can define our web services using Spring, um, we had to make some changes to our web XML. Okay, here's the old flavor that we were doing. So, you notice here, um, we had to define our um, JAXWS servlet and then we basically had to define one of these for each web service. So if we added another web service called DB Manager, we would have had to create a DB Manager servlet and a DB Manager mapping and that was just getting annoying to say the least. Um, the other thing was that I wanted to make it so that everything was in a services um, subdirectory of the website. So the way we migrate everything up to Spring is we have a context um, file, application context, we'll pull that up and here's where we're going, where we're going to be defining um, our um, web services using Spring Beans. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. So what we did was we set up a context. Okay, so we're going to point to our application context here. Um, we set up the Spring Listener so it can load that context when we start our app. Okay, and then we define our JAX servlet here, but we're using the Spring flavor of it. Okay, and then we set up our servlet mapping to be um, slash services slash star. Now this name can be anything you want here. I just chose that. All right, so that that gets um, Spring loaded up and telling Spring you know where our context file is and then how we're going to define our services okay so and we were able to comment out all this other stuff um, I guess I could put this back in would probably be a good idea put the welcome page back in why not okay so um, then when we go over to our application context there's some stuff in here now in order to make um, JAX work with Spring, we had to define a couple things. We had to define um, our tags that we're going to be using. Okay, and you see here we had to use JAXWS.dev. All right, that was a problem I had when I went to Metro site and I was looking at um, the Metro example on how to do this. Um, it didn't work. So, and, and the change was I had to put .dev in into both of these. Okay, everything else stayed the same. So this defines the tags that we're going to be using to define our web services, as you can see here, okay, and here. So now, the other thing too is, in order to wire it all up to our schema, we have to also define these two lines. In you know, this would be like your standard beans um, context definition for Spring, the header, and we had to put these in to get JAXWS to work and point it to the proper um, schema definition. And this was also a problem because this also required .dev. And the other thing is that as soon as you put this in here, you're going to start getting errors when you start up like class definitions not found and hence that's why you need these two libraries. So what I did was I found these two libraries on the net, I downloaded them, I created a separate um, user library in NetBeans and added both of these to it and then added that library to this project. So so you have to do a couple things. So once again you needed to define the web XML and this is what it looks like. Okay, and then you had to define and take this application context here 
and you had to define um, these two extra lines here and then you had to add these two extra lines to the schema locations here okay and make sure it's dot dev and then you had to define those other two libraries okay and then once we got that wired up then we were able to define our services so now our user manager service which is here okay and you see um, there's our user manager service so now um, when we define it we define it like this so we tell it okay everything is going to be at slash services and it's going to be um, slash services slash user manager and this is how we point to the bean which is going to be our web service okay and then we define a bean with the user manager that matches this and then of course this is the class to our user manager okay so now when you look here you see that um, it doesn't know all right so but as far as spring is concerned everything will be here now um, there's a couple other definitions I have in here that we're going to get to in, a, in some later videos where we're going to um, load up some properties and we're going to point to an LDAP client or even a database and then we'll have a way so that we can have um, spring give us the ability to grab our um, factory so we can get beans from the factory and then we'll define our beans in this file and we'll be able to get access to them through um, this mechanism here and we'll talk about that in some upcoming videos but for now what we're doing is just migrating our web services over so that's what we had to do to migrate the web services now the other thing is so we built and deployed this and of course um, we tested it by going to our URL and here's our user manager when we click that we got our WSDL so everything's ducky there um, the next thing we had to do is because we're using a, a secure token server we need to remap the secure token server to come back to our um, our services so when we go edit the attributes for our secure token service and we click configure here remember we had to, to define our service provider so we had to change the URL of our service provider to be the new URL here our key of course stayed the same okay so then we build and deployed um, our STS and then what we did was I rebuilt the client by pointing the client to our new user manager service here and as you can see it's pointing to the services version of it okay so now when we run this we'll be pointing to all the new stuff the new STS was deployed pointing to the new web service provider which moved to the services slash user manager directory um, we redeployed our secure web services now that we've have we're using beans to load them up spring beans and we've got spring configured properly to load it okay and we were able to test that of course by going to the URL and the WSDL certainly comes up now the uh, the real test here is to run the client so that's what we're going to do now so we rebuilt the client we're going to run the client and all the client does is calls the web service and then the web service returns back the um, email address of the person we're doing the lookup on which is get user by name and we pass it in a user ID which doesn't really exist because the web service all it's doing is um, sending back an email address so if we go here and look at the design get out of the design you see here we're just passing the user ID right back but we're also passing the e uh, uh, hard-coded email so we wanted to see what that was and that's what we're printing here in the log when we run it also note here now that we're dumping the um, the data coming back and forth from the SOAP request so there's some logging options that I found in Metro that we can turn on and we can see the encrypted data going back and forth and the certs that it's using and and all that neat stuff and again we'll talk about that in some of the upcoming videos so right now the purpose of the, this video was to one migrate our web services to spring um, modify our secure token service to point so that it knows the new provider um, location URL because we put services in the URL in front of all our web services um, rebuilt our client um, pointing to the new WSDL and we reran the client and we got the same results so we know that our spring migration was a success so there you have it using Metro and spring see ya